All right, family, how's everybody doing tonight, man? Thank you for riding out with us. Thanks for spending a little bit of your evening, a little bit of your time, a little bit of your life here with me and Jax and Zero while we talk about what we fit to be talking about tonight, man. I just want to start out by saying that this is not a channel. This is a community, and I love each and every one of you guys, man. You guys bring so much to my life, so I really appreciate that you would take time out of your day to just kick it with me, man. We're going to be talking more about Danny Masterson tonight. We're not going to be talking about like some huge groundbreaking earth shaking update we're going to be talking about the real real on the inside of prison because there's so much more to prison survival than people who haven't been there would ever think to actually like ponder and, and and comprehend like there's so much when it goes into your survival in prison and a whole lot of it has a lot to do with your mental health your support system and every single piece of Danny's life has fallen apart right out from underneath him I'm telling you right now so he's been in county so he hasn't been able to see a lot of the news and everything he didn't see that right after he got sentenced that his wife that ended up divorcing him immediately afterwards was out there getting consoled by his brother, like consoled, consoled, like it was sketchy consoled. Like if somebody like was grabbing up on my wife outside the courthouse like that, I'd have a hit on him, bro. 100%. They would be dead. If it was my own brother, he'd be double dead, bro. Like 100%. It was not something that you would want to see your significant other getting comforted, like mouth on her neck, hugging up on her. And she immediately filed for divorce immediately she filed for divorce. So that's just one aspect. He was in county. He's going to be finding this stuff out now that he's actually in prison. We're going to go back a little bit though. For people who don't know the whole story, we're going to just run through this really quick. We're going to speed run this. I'm good at speed running things because I'm Irish and I talk real fast because I got the ADHD, all 80 of them. So look, uh, Danny Masterson was on that 70s show. He was on the ranch. He became a Scientologist. While he was early on in Scientology, he ended up victimizing, like, he was convicted of two. So we can firmly say two. There was over 12 women that came forward to say that Danny Masterson put something in they drink and then drug them somewhere and abused them. Uh, so that's over a dozen women, homie. You know what I'm saying? Like if it's one woman and you're a rich person, it's conceivable to go, you know what? It's whatever's whatever. But like, look, man, over a dozen women came forward on this. Now they came forward because everyone he hung out with was in the church of Scientology. If you're in the church of Scientology and you're a famous person, the church of Scientology vastly limits your access to people that are on out the outside of the church. They try to keep you locked in with people that are in the church. Like I have a friend who is like friends with John Travolta, but he's not allowed to associate with him because of the Church of Scientology's rules. John Travolta is only allowed to hang out with a very limited amount of people that are outside of the church. He's been friends with John Travolta for years. Church of Scientology steps in, he's, he becomes a part of that church, all of a sudden he has limited access to his people outside of the church, which is crazy to me. Like That's how much of a cult the Church of Scientology is. People like him, Tom Cruise, Danny Masterson, they're in a bubble, bro, a vortex of Scientology and Scientology people. So they have this bar where a lot of them hang out. It's like a Scientology bar per se. And these are the people that he was victimizing, people within his own church, because he knew that the Church of Scientology was going to cover him. You don't make a complaint to the police if you're a Scientologist to so, uh, on somebody who's a fellow Scientologist without going to the Church of Scientology. They don't allow it. So these women would come forward and the church would be like, we'll handle it internally. And all they did was suppress it. They didn't allow these women to go and report these crimes. Crimes. Like they needed to go and report these crimes. The church held these big victims back, which means that they are culpable. Culpable means that they are like co-defendants. They are participants in these crimes. 100%. There is not a single person in the administration of that cult that isn't guilty right alongside with Danny Masterson and they should be held accountable. They should be held accountable by those women and by the legal system for the ways that they suppressed this story getting out for so long. Now eventually these women came out and they were able to uh, 
get a little bit of justice. Two out of the dozen women were able to get a little bit of justice. So uh, that's a beautiful thing that that happened. And they cracked him hard. I'm not going to lie, bro. California cracked him hard. They hit him with 15 years for each R charge and they stacked him. You don't normally get the max and then stacked, bro. They usually hit you with the max and they run it concurrent or they'll hit you with a lighter sentence and they'll run it consecutive to hit him with the hardest sentence and to stack it is crazy. But you know, I'm here for that. I'm all the way here for the 30 years for Mr. Masterson. So he went in, he did his little, you know, mm -hmm, through Kern Valley as he was getting, uh, you know, through the intake process. They decided they were going to send him to Cor Corcoran because Corcoran is sensitive needs yards. It's people who have terrible charges or gang dropouts or snitches, people that want, you know, protective custody per se. Uh, he went there and, and it was too hard for him, bro. Immediately, the GBG, the gay boy gangsters, put a hit out on his head. They wanted his ass and they wanted to slide something in his neck. I don't know which they wanted to do in which end. You know what I'm saying? That's not my business. It's not my get down. But, you know, the boys wanted to have a few things up inside of him. So when it got out that the GBG had a hit on him, immediately the Green Lighters, another SNY gang, and uh, the, the Deuce Fivers, the, the, the two Fivers, another dropout gang, they put a hit out on him. So they had a three-way race, but there was another gang that I didn't even hear about. You know what I'm saying? Like you hear a lot of this information piece by piece when it's coming from prison yards. And it can be a puzzle sometimes because we, me and my friend Andy, Andy, uh, fresh out 916 Andy on TikTok. Uh, no, first day out 916 Andy on TikTok. Fresh out Andy916 over there on Insta. Uh, he's been getting the word from the pound, from the compound, from the literal yard at Corcoran. You got dudes in there watching YouTube videos and sending text messages to my homeboy Andy, letting him know what it is and what it isn't. And so we've been getting this, this information. And then another gang got him. And this other gang is Aryan Brotherhood and Skinhead Dropouts. It's a white supremacist dropout prison gang. Wildest thing I ever heard. Wildest. You know what I'm saying? But their name is even wilder. The BBC. The, these white supremacist dudes literally call themselves the BBC. They getting BBC tattoos on themselves. White supremacists getting BBC tattooed on them. That's insane to me. Because BBC has always meant something way different to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I grew up here in BBC in a whole different context. Uh, and maybe that's just me. I, I don't know. I think it's probably not, though. Um, and by the way, you guys, Andy Goltz is here in the building right now. The homie who was giving us all of this amazing information is in these comments. His name's Andy Goltz on here. If you want to give him a sub, he's going to have some fire content here on YouTube, too. That's the homie. Hats off to you for the good intel. Now, a couple different channels questioned our intel. Couple different channels thought that me and Andy didn't know what we was talking about. In fact, and I'm not throwing shade at all whatsoever. We all grown people. We could disagree. We could think something may or may not be sketchy. And I'm fine with that. It's 100% respect across the board. My friend Gunner from Gunner's Collective. He's got uh, Gunner's Collective and Collective Clips here on YouTube. He made a whole video saying that he had heard something different from the yard, which is fine. That's fine. And then the very next day made a video saying, yo, I need to apologize to my boy JD because I, I actually talked to a, a, a somebody who works at Corcoran and they confirmed exactly what they said happened was true. There was one detail that we didn't have. We said that it was two people from the BBC that jumped him in front of the police. So Danny was locked up in his cell, not coming out. He had a single cell. They put him in there for his own safety. And he was not coming out for Chow because if he came out for Chow, he would be vulnerable. So he was hiding himself away. But if you go three days without going to Chow in there, they have to take you for either a mental health or a medical evaluation. And so they had two COs come and walk on either side of him. Three dudes from the BBC saw him, and they were like, yeah, bet this up. And from what Gunner said, from hearing it directly from staff that works at Corcoran, is that they got him, like, right in, in, in the little breezeway, bro, like, where the, the Gunner can't actually see, where it was like they'd have a little bit of time to get off. Like, they orchestrated this. They knew that this was going to happen. Uh, they probably knew what time it was that they were going to move him 
to, to go take him to medical or mental health. They probably got the word ahead of time because COs will feed inmates information when it comes down to somebody with these types of charges. If you got a skin beef, if, if you've hurt a woman, if you've hurt a child, whatever the case may be, them COs got wives, they got kids, they got people in their lives that they love. They don't like this type of trash at all whatsoever. So they fed information to the inmates more than likely to let them know, hey, this is when they're going to get moved, you know. So three of them were ready to go and they jumped them. They didn't slide nothing in them. It was right in front of the cops. If you're going to stab somebody, you want to try to get away with it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's extra time. That's a weapons charge. That's an attempted murder charge. That's a whole lot more time. But just for three of them to just jump them and beat them up, they did it right in front of the police. Two police. And it sounds, from what Gunners heard and from what we heard, like the cops took their sweet time in getting them off Danny. Danny got roughed up. That was Danny's little welcome to your next 30 years of your life, bitch. You know, like he's got 30 years of this to look forward to. They're going to keep putting hands all across this dude for the next 30 years. And now the BBC, they were the first ones to get a hold of him. The brothers by choice. So technically the brothers by choice, if he goes to another yard, cause they moved him to another yard, right? And we'll talk about that yard here in a second. So since he's on another yard, the brothers by choice got him first. If there's any brothers by choice there, he, they own him. They absolutely own him. That means they get in his loot. They're going to get him on a phone, logging into his bank accounts and sending that money out. Uh, they, you know, they get to beat on him. They get to have him buy all his canteen. They get to take all his canteen. He's going to be walking around in state issued shoes for the next 30 years. He's not going to have nothing. So that's one aspect of it. Uh, they moved him to the California men's colony. Now the California men's colony used to be a super sweet joint and it still is to a certain degree. Um, they have about 2000 people there now. Uh, they closed down the minimum side of it. There used to be a level one, level two. Now all that's open anymore is the level three part of it. So there's, it's a level three, it's a minimum and they got cells. I thought originally that he was going to be in a dorm, but they have him in, in, in a cell. So he shut down in a cell uh, at this place where there's going to be less opportunity for people to get at him. But we've been talking to people from the inside and people who have done time. We're still working on getting a connection inside the California men's colony. It's, it's a little harder to find somebody with a cell phone in there. But you know what? Andy is slicker than weasel grease and he's already talking to somebody. But he has friends who have actually touched down on that yard. And I want to read you a text message from what that friend said to him. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through this real quick. He said, I was headed to CMC on the bus and had a funny feeling about the yard I was headed to. My childhood friend was headed to the same spot on the way on the bus and I asked him, are you sure this yard's cool, brother? He was basically asking, is this an okay yard for us to be at? Because dude was an active gang member. He, we're going to just use his prison name. His name is Reckless. Um, when they got there, he said the first thing that happened is three big tattooed white boys came up to them and said, hey, are you active? Now, what active means is are you an active yard gang member? Like, are you Aryan Brotherhood? Are you a dirty white boy? Are you a Nazi lowrider? Those are three of the major white gangs on the California prison yards. They're all white supremacist gangs, all three of those. Uh, dirty white boys, Aryan Brotherhood, Nazi lowriders. And so they asked him, are you, you know, one of these active gangs? And homeboy said, yeah, what's up, man? I am thinking that these dudes were active too. And they were like, yo, we don't take active dudes here. And he's basically like, well, what's up, man? What you want to do about it? And not only did these three dudes jump him, but two other dudes came and jumped him too. So people still get down on this yard. Like he got jumped by five dudes within 10 minutes of being off of that bus. There are still sharks on this yard. They're just not active gang members that are in the big, you know, however many gangs they have that are the big white boy gangs there. I, I know of at least three on the California yard that are big heavy hitters. Uh, and so there's different gangs though. You know, there's the brothers by choice. There's the green lighters. There's different gangs for different dropouts. So that's, that's where Danny's at right now. And he's got 30 years. So let's just think about this right now. Danny's, Danny's wife left him within, she filed divorce papers within days of him getting sentenced. Days she filed a, a divorce. Uh, her brother or his brother is trying to get up on his wife 
And he's definitely going to be hearing about that. His wife left him. His wife took the kid. His wife did say that she would be bringing the kid to be able to see Danny at visits. Whatever's whatever. I mean, get, get down with your bad self, Bijou. Whatever you think is best for that kid, that's between you and that kid. You know what I'm saying? I, personally, it wouldn't be me. Not with that charge. But she said that she's still going to get visits with this kid. So he has that much hope to hang on to. Hope is dangerous in prison. Hope will kill you quick in prison. I promise you, having hope and looking forward to things, because DOC will take every single thing away from you. You're a bag of flesh filled with blood with a DOC number while you're in there. They don't care about your life. They're going to strip everything from you, not just the inmates, the institution, the administration. And they've already treated this dude like the only, the only thing that he got was he got moved to this joint. And this joint is still no punk. This joint is still not going to be an easy ride for him. So he got booted from the Church of Scientology. Like, shortly after she filed divorce, Bijou Phillips, his wife, the Church of Scientology expelled him from the Church of Scientology for being a suppressive person. Now, I'm not super hip to the lingo of the Church of Scientology, but I believe what they're talking about when they say he was a suppressive person, I believe what they mean is that he doesn't live up to the standards of the Church of Scientology. The Church of Scientology has very specific standards, and they might cover up for you if you catch a hard R case, but if you get caught and you're making them look bad, all of a sudden, you're not meeting up to their standards. If you get away with it, cool, we got you, buddy. We're going to help you. We're going to have your back. But since he got caught, since he got convicted, he's out of the club. The Church of Scientology has shunned him. So he's lost his family. He's lost his church. He's lost his freedom. He's been beaten up. Uh, he's, he's, his wife probably in the divorce and the separation is going to get a large amount of his money. She has her own money too, but he's probably going to lose a large amount of his money. 30 years, he's not going to be rich the whole time that he's in prison. I can promise you that they're going to be draining him dry and he's not going to make it being rich 30 years in this joint, man. They're going to run this dude to the bone. And when he's out of money and they can't just beat him anymore, he's probably going to get turned out because I guarantee you there's going to be dudes in there that are, you know, gay for the stay or gay for, you know, real gay for all life that are going to be like, yo, how much you want to, to rent him out? Let me rent out his cornhole, bro. Let me get them cheeks. It happens in there. It happens like that. 100% on those, on those yards that are not active yards too, because it's literally the gangs that stop the hard R-ing of other inmates in there. And, and they don't do it for like a lot of chomos or hard artists. They don't usually go out of their way to make sure they don't get done like that. Danny Masterson, 100% is going to end up taking some deal. He's going to get some deal. He better hunker down for doinkage because it's coming up inside him, bro. He's going to understand the embrace of another man on the inside of his belly button. It's just a matter of time. He may as well just adjust to it and uh, learn to relax and loosen up like his victims did after he drugged them and drug them somewhere because that is happening to him, bro. He is 100% on the road to, to, to getting tickled from the inside. They're going to they're gonna run his pink all the way till it's brown. Uh, so he's going to have a really bad time in there. I don't see this dude making it between the mental health issues. Like he's already told them that he wanted to self delete he, when he did that, when he was at Corcoran, that was one of the first plays that he pulled. He said, I'm going to self delete. And by the way, the church of Scientology had already booted him from the church at that point. But if you're a Scientologist, you're not allowed to have mental health issues. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in depression. They don't believe in anxiety. They don't believe in, in you know, PTSD or any of that type of stuff. So he, he's already like lost literally everything. He's already got self-deletion on his mind. He knows what he's got to look forward to for the next three decades. And it's bad, bro. I'm going to tell you right now, like I get down in prison. I can do pretty well. I know how to function. I know how to program. I know how to run my own show. I know how to conduct myself and you ain't never going to catch me in there on no faulty charge or with no snitch paperwork. So I'm going to walk whatever yard with pride and I'm not going to get in a wreck because I just know how to be respectful. I know how to take care of myself and I know how to take care of my brothers. I know how to, I know what time it is in there. He doesn't, he doesn't. But if I had 30 years to do, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. There's, there's no way that I'm going to sit in there for 30 years and get out in my seventies. You know what I'm saying? It'll be, 
It, he was in that 70s show. He'd get out of prison be in that 70s turned out show. He'd be all bad, bro. He's got no life. His quality of life by the time he gets out of prison is absolutely non-existent. So what's the point? I do not see this dude making it. If he doesn't get murked, I see him doing it to himself. That's just what I see. I'm calling it right now. And it may not be this month. It may not be this year. But he is not going to make it the duration. Prison is a marathon, not a sprint, homie. Just because you make it through the first month or the first year, when you got a sentence like that, it's all bad. And it's going to wear on you. It's going to wear on you for such a long time. So I don't see him making it through this. I just want to point out, I don't know if anybody's seen my shirt. This is my new merch shirt. And I did link it as the product uh, on this. So if anybody's interested in grabbing one of these, man, you can buy it straight off here, straight off the link from YouTube. Appreciate you. That's my shameless self-promotion. I'm sorry, you guys. Big shout out to the moderators. We love you guys. Thank you for being here. Um, so yeah, he's stuck. And there's not really any outs that he has. He's probably already owned up by a prison gang in the CMC right now. Now, we're working on getting an actual source inside the CMC. And Andy is really proactively on this. He knows a lot of people. He's a really connected dude when it comes to being able to network throughout the, the California prison system. So we're going to have more updates as things happen, it's just going to take us a minute because moving from Corcoran to CMC is a big shift. It's a smaller prison. There's a lot less people there, so it's harder to nail down somebody who can give you that inside track, if you know what I'm saying. Um, real quick, I want to thank Dr. Toe Tag. Uh, Blue Bomb, two years, and he will take the coward's way out. That's my guess. That's a fairly good guess, my man. I, I would say yes. Within the next two years, he's done. Uh, JK, shout out from Arkansas, the most underrated state. I went to the state of Arkansas. I loved y'all. Y'all showed out, man. Y'all are a class act. Uh, Silencio Steve, greetings from New Zealand. Been one of those weird rabbit hole months and watched a bunch recently. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Big love to you out there in New Zealand, my homie. Uh, and Mad Catter, thank you so much. Woot woot, homie. Appreciate you. Big love and respect. So, like, look, he's not going to have any quality of life inside. He knows that his life is done on the outside. Like, bro, like, he had such a good life. He, he had himself set. He had a career. He had people around him that cared about him. He found a beautiful wife and had a kid. He threw it all away to victimize women. And now he's going to get to be the victim for the next three decades. And the thing about people who victimize other people, most of them ain't tough, bro. Danny Masterson, I promise you, he ain't tough. Now, there have been reports that he did take a little bit of jujitsu. That's not going to do him no good in there. It didn't do him no good when he got jumped by three of these BBCs. These BBCs beat him on up right in front of the police. The police couldn't protect him. He couldn't protect himself. One thing you have to understand about prison, I know a lot of people here have never been locked up, never been to jail. And honestly, I respect that so much. I applaud that. It's scumbag shit to go to prison. It's scumbag shit to go to jail. I'm never, ever going to endorse going to prison. Going to prison is terrible. It means you were out having terrible behaviors, and you were sloppy, and you got caught, and it's just scumbaggery all around. And then you get in there, and you're locked up with other scumbags, and it's totally dehumanizing. It doesn't make you tough. It doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make you a man. It's not a rite of passage. It's just being a piece of shit on top of being a piece of shit, bro. There's nothing good about going to prison at all. I'm not glorifying it when I say this, and some people say that I am. I don't understand how hearing about the horrors of prison makes people want to go to prison. I can't help you with that. You, I, I don't know what to say to convince you that going to somewhere like prison is not a good thing for you. But let me just say this. There's no safe spaces in prison. They, they might be able to put you in a complete and total isolated lockdown, but you're still having other inmates making your food, you're still having other inmates deliver your food. You're still having other inmates doing your laundry. You can get poisoned. You can get chemical burned. You can have people put glass in your food. Like there's always ways to get at anybody and they want to make your life miserable. They will break you down. They will demoralize you. They will mess with your mental health all in the hopes that you're going to hang it up in that cell. And I don't think he's going to make it. 1,000%, I think that his days are numbered. Yeah, somebody said Hillary Clinton going to visit. He's going to end up Hillary Clinton, dog. Like, you know, the Clintons have taken a whole bunch of people out. If he doesn't do it to himself, it's going to happen one way or another. And yeah, somebody, I saw somebody just throw uh, hepatitis. Look, 
Biological weapons is what they were starting to use when I left prison. I, the, my, my last few months on, on a, a maximum security yard, they were getting uh, needles, syringes, and having these old timers that had the full blown AIDS squeeze up blood and they were running them into people and pushing off full blown AIDS blood into people. I had to stop somebody from doing it to one of my little homies because he owed them like $27 worth worth for for chuckle brush for 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 tree bro like literally trying to give this kid full-blown aids over a, a weed debt that's crazy as hell to me like that's the level of people that you're dealing with in prison they'll give you hepatitis they'll give you aids if they can they'll give you whatever they can get you with bro they're gonna get you with in there if they want you they're gonna get you there's nowhere that you can run and nowhere that you can hide and having a sentence that's decades multiple decades is absolutely, it, he's not going to make it. There's no way that he's going to make it. So he has nothing to come back to the streets to. His wife doesn't love him. His wife's moved on. His wife might be boinking his brother for all we know. Like we've seen the pictures they were taking. That looked like a really close embrace to me. He's going to see that when he's in there. And do you know what that's going to do to his heart and soul? <laughs> crushed, dude. That dude is going to be crushed when he sees his brother hugging his wife with his mouth on his wife's neck. I, I die, bro. I, I all the way die. So, you know, his church shunned him. He has nothing. So I think you guys get the agenda. You guys get what I'm talking about here. I want to give a big shout out to, to Gunner because Gunner confirmed it and upped the information to not just one of the BBCs, but three of the BBCs were able to jump Danny Masterson right in front of two officers. Now, let's talk about those two off, uh, those two, the three BBCs. They got immediately taken to SEG. Danny, this is how it went down. They jumped him, they took the three BBCs to SEG, and they took Danny right back to his single cell. So they put him right back in his cell instead of AG said, uh, AG SEG. And within two, I think an hour and a half, two hours, they were bringing him out. They locked the whole unit down. Everybody had to go into their cells when he did. And they locked the whole unit down. And then they took him out with no one else. They locked the place down and got it to where they could take him isolated. So there were no more incidents and took him to transport and immediately transported him on the weekend to the CMC. And they don't usually do those types of transfers on the weekend. So I think that they already had it set up for him to go to the CMC. I think that they already knew that it was just going to be a problem. I think they already had this plan of action and they were just waiting for something to happen so that they could send him. You know what I'm saying? Josh Caudill said, love your content, bro. Watch your stuff all the time. Much love out of Eugene, Oregon. Right back to you from Eugene, Oregon, bro. Thank you for being here. So I think... They already knew what the program was. They were just waiting for something to happen. And something did happen. He got his welcome. He got his welcome jump in. And now it's going to be a whole lot more of that for the next 30 years. And those dudes went into AdSeg. They're probably not going to get no, uh, they're probably not going to get no shoe. They're probably not going to, the shoe is the, um, you know, the shoe is where they, it's like the, the long-term hole where they keep you against your will in solitary confinement. They're probably just going to do a little hole shot and come right back. Zach the Witch Doctor said, JD, too bad Danny can't get the Silent Hill treatment. Hashtag razor wire. Much love and respect, brother. Much love and respect to you, Zach. Hell yeah, brother. Um, and Mad Catter again, homie. Thank you so much. Big love and respect to you, family. Uh, Wisdom's Cause. As a CO, I noticed that many chomos will do things to stay in closed management. I know that's right because they know they, they think they're going to be safer there, dog. I only do what I have to with them legally. When the time comes, I only ask that the other guys do not do it when I'm there. Paperwork sucks. I'm liking this comment. Big love and respect to you, Wisdom's Cause. I 100% had COs that would turn a blind eye. I had COs that would crack doors for me, homie. You know, like most of these COs, I'm just going to tell you right now, a lot of people say that they hate COs. I'm not somebody who hates COs. I'm not somebody who hates cops. I hate bad COs. I hate COs that abuse their power. I hate cops that abuse their power. I hate either of them that cuff a, a dude up and then kick the shit out of him while he's cuffed up because that's a foul ass game. You know what I'm saying? 
Most CEOs are just there to do their job, get their paycheck. They're not trying to judge every single person that comes through. But I'll tell you one thing, a lot of them got a wife, a lot of them got kids or nieces and nephews and sisters and mothers, and they don't respect these people that are on those skin beef charges. And a lot of them are either gonna look the other way so they don't gotta fill out that paperwork, or they might even facilitate like, hey, delay, down there, cell 13. You're gonna pop the door, I got you. Cool, how long you need? Just give me like five minutes. I'm gonna come out with a bag. And I run down there, go in there, boom, handle business, you know, beat him up, make him lick the rim of his own toilet, pack all of his stuff into his laundry bag. She popped the door, I'd sling it over my shoulder like I'm carrying laundry out and just move on down the tier, bro. A lot of these CEOs are with the business. They'll let you handle it just out of love for their own kids, just out of love for their own community because they're real life people. They're like me and you. They just got a job where they have to be in prison. Uh, and, and most of them do more time than most of the real inmates. If you're going to be a career CEO, you live in there and you just get to go home at night. So they know exactly what time it is. They see the people that are like just human beings who made mistakes and the people that are creatures, the chomos and the hard artists the, that are creatures, these people who, who, you know, school shooters who kill kids, they get no love and they get no respect in prison. And it doesn't matter if they're famous or not. It's all bad for those people on those yards. Rational homie, what if Danny's innocent? Why, why did it take 20 years? It took 20 years because they tried to report it at the time, homie. They went to the Church of Scientology, the church that they were a part of, that everyone they knew was a part of, that everybody was scared of their own church and they reported it, and the Church of Scientology told them they were not to come forward with it. They would deal with it internally. In fact, one of the victims was told by the Church of Scientology that she had to go to mediation counseling with Danny Masterson for multiple sessions. Her abuser, the dude who drugged her and did horrible things to her, that she had to go and sit with a counselor to try to get them to get past it. They did everything except take care of these women and keep them and the other women safe. That's why it took 20 years, homie, because a lot of these women were terrified to come forward. Mallard the Duck, I enjoy your content. Much love and respect, bro. God bless you. God bless you too, homie. I'm so glad that you're here. Thank you for being a part of this community. Does that make sense though as to why it took so long? Like I know like it can be hard to understand the mentality of being stuck in a cult if you've never been in a situation that's really oppressive, if you've never been in a situation where like your whole world and your whole environment is wrapped up in this thing and they are the absolute authority in your life. And that's what these women were dealing with was this type of a situation. It's, it's going to be hard to next to impossible for us to understand from the outside, but they were terrified to come forward because the church was that church is powerful. The, the Church of Scientology owns an entire city in Florida called Clearwater, and it's a terrifying place. The Church of Scientology owns a city in California with an underground prison in it. Like, there is a lot of aspects and layers to this. The Church of Scientology makes people disappear. So for them to hold back these women from seeking justice and keeping other women safe, they are criminals as well period, point blank. Izzy Dark Lord, what's up, man? Haven't been around a while. How's life, JD? My life is beautiful and blessed, and it's always a great day when I get to see you, homie. I'm glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Big love and respect to you, dude. Um, Jeffrey Bundy, love the content, man. Keep it up. Big love and respect to you, Jeff. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight, man. Glad to have you here in this community. Um, I just want to remind anybody who's not subscribed, if you want to subscribe, I would love that. The community would love to have you. Uh, you're more than welcome to. If you don't want to and you're just hanging out for tonight, I just want to say welcome. We're glad to have you kicking it with us tonight. Charles Thompson, is Molesterson in the same amount of danger at CMC that he was at in Corcoran? Love your content, brother. Much respect. So, Charles, thank you so much. Much love and respect right back to you, homeboy. I would not say that he is in as much danger. I think that it would be foolish to, to assert that he is in as much danger as he would be at Corcoran. Corcoran is a much uh, harder prison. You know, Corcoran, people, people uh, last year somebody got beheaded in Corcoran. The CMC is a violent prison. They had riots at CMC two days in a row back in 2020. Uh, 
they crack off. Stuff happens there. But to say it's as violent and as dangerous as Corcoran would definitely not be accurate. It's, it's definitely a milder joint. And I think that that's why they sent him there was to try to give him some semblance of a chance because they know that he's not going to make it. You know, um, Ali Chambers finally caught alive. Welcome. We're so glad you're here. I worked at a state prison when I was 17 and never felt safer knowing most of the guys in there had more respect than COs. Yo, Ali, that is crazy that you worked in a, a state prison while you were still 17 years old. You're, you're, you're brave as hell. And yeah, like the thing is, is that we're going to protect respectful people, especially women and especially somebody who's younger like that. Like, I'd have gone to war for you. If you were working my unit or my yard in prison, I'd have gone to war to make sure you were safe. Like, hands down, uh, a lot of people in there do terrible, terrible stuff, but a lot of us were just lost. I was lost. I hated myself. My childhood abuse, I just ran with it, and I never got healing, and it turned me into somebody that I didn't really like for a long time. You know, I was insecure. I didn't have self-love. Uh, I overcompensated for things by trying to be tough. I couldn't manage my own emotions or my own thoughts. My PTSD owned me and it ruled me. But at the end of the day, most of us are willing to protect women. Most of us are willing to stand up for what's right when we're, when we're able to. We just have a propensity towards making really bad mistakes. Um, Blue Bomber. The church is actually pretty good at mind games and wants to keep it self-contained and powerful so they can squash any outside attempts. That's facts, dude. That's facts. And the more that I look into and learn about the Church of Scientology, the more horrific the Church of Scientology seems to me. Um, and, like, I have done some research on cults. I really want to do a, a series on here about modern-day cults in America. Um, and the Church of Scientology is one of those ones that's so powerful that it's intimidating to even want to, like, speak openly on the Internet, speak out about it, um, you know, especially with their reach in states like Florida and California. It's just insane. Uh, you know, I think that there was just some breaking news, and I need to go back and research it. There's going to be a video coming out soon about it from me. Um, but, uh, the, one of the leaders of the church of Scientology made his wife disappear and no one's seen or heard from her in like four years. She's just ghosted. And I'm sure that if you went and, uh, checked out, uh, growing up in Scientology, Aaron over there, amazing channel has a lot of great firsthand information because he grew up in that church. Um, Aaron does wonderful, wonderful work and he comes out with some great information. Uh, I'm sure that he could tell you more about that story. Uh, Sean Thompson, 21 years in Arizona prisons, SMU, brother, good to see us making it. Much love and respect always. Hey, homie, I'm so proud of you. 21 years in Arizona prisons is crazy, man. Look at us out here doing the good thing, living that good life, being the best people that we can be. I'm proud of you too, homie, and I'm glad that you're here with us. Let's stay out, dog. Let's take care of our families. Let's win, man. I love to see every single one of us win, dude. Creatively insane. Thank you. Mike, thank you so much. RPR Aquatic, I appreciate what you do. And as a person, love you. Keep strong. Thank you so much. That means so much to me. I really appreciate you as well, my friend. Uh, Mike Pippitz, hey, JD, love the comments. Much love and respect right back to you, man. I appreciate you, Mike. Damien Lord Talon, I've been in county and now I work at a state prison now. Some staff are straight up dicks for no reason. I have it from both sides and also love your content. Keep it up, brother. Thank you so much, dog. Oh, my eyes are killing me. I got the allergies, dog. Do you see this? I look like I smoke and I don't. Ugh. Sorry, y'all. I got to put on some glasses because my eyes are messed up. The lights, the combination of the allergies and the lights, the bright lights on me just kill my eyes sometimes. I would love another Zyrtec. Uh, Damien, man, I appreciate you. Big love and respect to you, homie. Um, and there we go. That's what I was looking for. My boy, Tommy B. Every time I see Tommy B's name pop up, I get excited, man. Uh, three days off the corno and crushing it in the gym at 4 a.m., brother. It's real. I'm just trying to beat this caffeine dependency and constant fatigue. Hey, homie. Cheers to that. I completely understand, man. It's good to see you, Tommy. I'm glad that you're finding your focus in the gym and being able to crush that dependency that you're working on, man. 
Kyle K, fart from bunk and it rises into your celly's nose. Homie, look, that's one thing that really bothers people in there. If you want a bottom bunk and you blow ass and you got a top bunk celly, just know that that type of heat rises, homie. That type of heat rises. That smell is going to rise up. It's going to emanate. Now, if you're on the top bunk and the dude's below you and you blow some ass, it's not going to be nearly as bad. Don't sit on a bottom bunk and shit on your celly that's above you. That's bad form, man. That stuff's really no good. Look, I'm just going to show y'all so y'all know that I'm not taking no weird stuff. This is a gel tab of Zyrtec. Just so you know, allergy, you allergy schmeds. <laughs> I know that even seeing somebody take a pill can be triggering to some people that are in recovery and I never want to trigger other people, but I have to have my allergy meds. It's just, I don't live without allergy meds. I didn't have allergies really bad when I was in the state of Florida. When we lived in Daytona beach, just two blocks from the beach, man, like the air was like, I don't know if it was the salt in the air or whatnot, but like I hardly ever got allergies moving back to Eugene to the Willamette Valley. There's so much pollen and so much crazy stuff in the air. And, it, you know, it's like it's all natural. It's not smog. It's clean air. It just has, like, tree cums in it, you know, flower, flower jizz and tree cums. And it makes my eyes burn. It makes my face hurt. It's awful. Uh, Tlo's scene kid. I probably messed up your name. I'm sorry. I did time and part of a certain white gang in uh, North Carolina, and I had to show my worth prospecting by taking care of extorting a chomo. Hey man, it is what it is, bro. That extortion game is big in there. Sometimes that's how a lot of people get their hustle up. That's how a lot of people make their money. I don't think that a lot of people understand like how severe the, the extortion game is. And extortion can be an outside charge. Um, when I was at Snake River, they were legitimately, they had the state police in there investigating extortion charges because so many chomos and, and hard artists were getting beat up and forced to give up all of their money and all of their commissary. They were beating them up and taking them for literally everything. They were doing like state police investigations and they were giving people outside charges, taking people out and charging them with new crimes for beating up chomos, taking their stuff and then making them pay them every month. They would literally do like little, um, like black light only ink markings on these, these chomos, uh, canteen stuff. And then when the chomos handed it out, they would go into these people's cells and do cell searches and take a black light. And you wouldn't be able to see it with the naked eye. So they'd be going in there with a the black light and looking for these markings and they would charge you with extortion charges if they caught you with some stuff that was marked with that. So we had dudes literally in there like taking the stuff they extorted from the chomos and like throwing the boxes away out in the, out in the day room or like rubbing it down with muscle rub because that muscle rub that they have in there, that'll take Sharpie off. That'll take any type of ink off stuff really easily, you know? So that was one method that they were using to beat the state police investigations. So the state police couldn't get enough evidence to give them outside charges when they were peeling them chomos back for their stuff. Uh, just one more quick plug, you guys, if you guys want, this is my newest shirt. Uh, it's my newest merch shirt. It's the only one that I'm on. Uh, and it just dropped and I did leave a little link in the live for it. Um, it's available right now, but it's selling out fast. I'm sorry. Size small is already gone. Um, the, the rest of the sizes are going to sell incredibly fast. I tried to, to ship out a size small to one of the little homies the other day. Um, and they're already sold out. So I don't know how long we're going to have them. I figured I'd just let you guys know. I just got mine today and I'm really stoked on it. Even though it's weird wearing something with my own face on it. I wore it today just to be able to show you guys. That's my shameless self-promotion. I love you guys. Sorry about that. Um, Zion Tyler, thank you so much, homie. I appreciate you. Zach Fulghost. Hey, JD. First time catching a live, long time viewer, and I could catch you tonight. Glad I could catch you tonight. Much love, man, from Louisiana. Zach, what's up, homie? I'm so glad that you caught a live. These are my favorite thing. I love hanging out and just riding and talking with you guys, man, and getting to have a little bit of interaction. And Louisiana is one of those states that I've always wanted to go to, and I've never gotten to get to, bro. I really want to go check out Louisiana, man. So maybe when I'm in Louisiana, I'll see you out there, homeboy. Big love and respect. Bear, appreciate you, homie. Thank you so much for that support. Alex Haggerty. Hey, JD. Keep up the good work in the communities. Some advice for everyone. Don't commit crime. The government doesn't like competition. You 100 on that, bro. You 100 on that. And look, man, 
People say, don't do the crime if you can't do the time, bro. Like, just don't do the crime because the time sucks. It's not about whether you can or can't do it. I've seen absolute gomers, absolute flanders make it through prison. People can do the time, but you don't want to. You're leaving your family out there to dry. You're going in there where cops watch you shit. You have to ask cops for toilet paper. Your quality of life is non-existent. You guys deserve better than that. We all deserve better than that. But if we can't conduct ourselves on a certain level out here on the streets, even a minimal level, then that's where we're going to end up. So I encourage everybody to live a legal and productive lifestyle. Like you don't even catch me doing simple shit no more, homie. That's how much I respect my freedom. I went to prison because I didn't respect myself. I didn't love myself and I didn't know the value of my own freedom. Now that I know the value of my own freedom and I've learned to love myself and I've been able to build a life that, that's worth a fuck, you will not catch me slipping up, dude. I'm just not doing it. I don't do nothing that could put me back in because I love the life that I have today. And I want that for each and every one of you guys because you deserve it. I love you. You deserve better. Blackbeard, what's up, homie? Caution, nothing's without... Uh, caution's nothing without charisma. For if a man plays the fool, then it's only fools he'll persuade, but appear to be the devil and all men will submit. I like that, homie. What poem is that from? That was beautiful, dog. I appreciate you, Blackbeard. Tommy said, I'm sorry, I have to POV. C.O. Stevens just caught an inmate taking a number three in the showers and he, ha he, ain't, he ain't having it. Homie, I'm not even gonna be able to do the Stevens right now. I can't, I can't yell at the moment. Uh, I got Jax on the couch and everything. I think that he would just go, oh, God damn it. You know, so uh, I, I normally I would scream at you in my Stevens voice, but... I, oh, okay. Thank you, though. But, yeah, you know, sometimes you just have to see that type of stuff and go, oh, God damn it. Why'd I choose this fucking job? That's as much as I can yell. My throat hurts. Abby, eat local honey. It'll help with allergies. I absolutely do that, um, but I have, like, power allergies. I have those allergies that have face tattoos and SoundCloud accounts, uh, and, you know, they just come for me and hit right below the belt. It's all bad. Uh, Sledge and Wedge, my bros in Walker County, sheriffs, uh, need prayers, Dan. My bros in Walker County, sheriffs, need prayers, Dan. All right, all right, man. Appreciate you, Sledge and Wedge. We'll be praying for your brother. Uh, Zach Dembski, much love from Youngston, Ohio. Big love right back to you, Zach. Hell yeah. Very interested. I hope everyone is doing well this beautiful evening. Do you have any prison gambling stories? So look, very interested. I don't gamble. I don't play cards for not money or for money. I don't gamble. Like, I just don't get down with that. Like, I have the ADHD so bad that you're not going to catch me out there gambling, sitting at a table, playing with cards and stuff. We did have tables. Like, my, my, my prison gang had a table out there uh, at OSP that was making us money, but we had somebody who ran that. Let me just explain a little bit about how on a maximum security yard, gambling is going to go. So if you're out there on a maximum security yard and um, you want to start a table, you need to get one of the gangs to back you because a lot of people are not going to pay up. And uh, if they owe you a large amount of money, they might just send somebody to take you off the yard. You need a gang to have like as an insurance uh, policy. Because if, if somebody's not paying up, the gang goes and presses them, gets the money. If they need to beat them up or stab them, it's handled. All you have to worry about out on that yard is playing the cards and getting people to owe. And then we'll do the collections if people screw around. And if somebody wants to threaten you or take you off the yard because they owe money, we handle that for you. And even if they try to take one of us off the yard, you know, we got another five that are going to jump him when he turns around the corner. So, Gambling tables out there that are run are almost always backed by a prison gang. And that's one of the reasons why they tell you not to gamble in there is because you're not just dealing with like some of these dudes that run tables. They look like gomers, bro. They look like straight nerds. They're Flanders as fuck. But I guarantee you, they got some big ass dudes uh, that, that, you know, there's a whole group of them that are backing them. So you're not just messing with the person dealing the cards. You're messing with the prison gang. They got a prison gang behind them. Uh, Izzy Dark Lord, it's amazing to see how much you actually care about those in the community you've built. 
I have so much respect for you, man. Look, I'm just blessed and privileged to be a part of this community that we have here. You know what I'm saying? Like I never would have first saw five years ago when I was strung out, sitting in a hotel, so desperate and alone that like I tried to check out that I would come to a point where I would have so many people that genuinely cared, that were genuinely in my corner and I could be in their corner and we could all have each other's backs. This community and the life that I have today is so incredible and I thank each and every one of you for being a part of it on a daily basis, man. I can't tell you what you guys mean to me. It really like, even if I wasn't having allergies, it would make my eyes wet just thinking about how much you guys have my back and I love you for that. Chris Brown, what's up, homie? Big love and respect. Uh, let's take one from Beyondre. I like that. What's up, Beyondre? Uh, I earn an A on a seven minute video on reducing recidivism using JD's energy as inspiration. I owe you a debt of thanks. You don't owe me nothing. It's so good to hear that you got an A. Keep smashing them goals. Keep moving forward. We are all proud of you and we believe in you, homie. Big love and respect to you. Uh, RPR Aquatic. I hope everyone has a good one. Uh, good time on the rest of the live. Love you, JD. Got to head out to work. Bro, have an amazing day at work. Be careful, be safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Big love and respect to you, big homie. Um, We're in the woods. Stop. <laughs> Yo, homie, big love and respect to you, dog. So I'm going to just take some random questions here for a minute. Uh, do a flip. Absolutely not. No, I will die. I, do you see my build? I'm not a flip type person. Um... I'm going to pay you $500. Please come home. Okay, that's cool. I'll take $500, homie. Uh, much love and respect, JD. Anita Little. Yo, big love and respect to you, too. Um, JD, you're badassery. Love your content. Keep spitting the truth. Thank you so much, Aaron. I appreciate you so much. My algorithm is a great time. Lol, no idea what's going on here. Megan, we just hanging out. Sis, we having a good time. This is family. Like if you're just uh, coming here for the first time, uh, this is a community. This isn't a YouTube channel. We're, we all got each other's backs and we roll, we squat up. We love each other here. This is a place where you can get support. This is a place where you can come and just kick it and laugh. Uh, we hope that you're comfortable and we hope that you stay. We'd love to have you be a part of us. Uh, Tommy B., Let's just reiterate, as an actual Christian fundamentalist and someone with Asperger's, I love and respect you and Jax and still for my kind is astounding. I fucking love y'all. Christ is my witness. Big love and respect to you, homie, man. That's beautiful. We appreciate you, Tommy. You know that we always love you here. Um, oh, are you telling me you'll give me $500 to do a flip? Nah, bro. I'm going to have, you know how much my doctor bill is going to be if I try to do a flip? the deductible for the emergency room. No, there's no way. How tall am I? I am six foot. I'm six foot, 255 pounds. That's not flipping weight. <laughs> um, what about Bill Cosby? So Bill Cosby didn't get it. A, uh, look, some cultures go harder on the sex offense thing than others. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like if you a white boy and you go in there on a skin beef, we don't tolerate it. Other cultures have other feelings about that. And that's why people like Bill Cosby don't have, uh, as hard of a time as they should. Um, Timbit boy, JD, can you shout me out? Big shout out, Timbit. Love you, homie. Uh, worst fight, worst fight that I've been in or the worst fight that I've seen. I don't know. It's always hard to judge like what's the worst because there's so many fights that go down, um, and, and, you know, do you want to talk about fights? Do you want to talk about stabbings? I, I can tell you, um, like, one time I was just standing in line for canteen. And there's probably, you know, 150 people in line for canteen. It's like a congregation of people all waiting out on the yard at Oregon State Penitentiary. And it's like this window you walk up to, you hand them your list, they gather your groceries, they send you off with them, um, and they take the money off of your account. We're standing in line, and all of a sudden, I hear this... <laughs> like behind me and I feel this wetness on the back of my neck and I go to wipe my neck. It's not raining out. I thought a bird shit on me again because a bird had shit on me like a week earlier. I put my hand on the back of my neck. I pull it out as blood and I feel this scuffle behind me. Three dudes had run up on this dude and just started stabbing him right behind me and he just started projectile squirting. It was, it was gnarly and everybody just kept quiet. When you get stabbed in prison, 
if you start yelling, it's going to make things worse because then you're going to be labeled a snitch. You're going to get branded as a snitch. Yelling is telling in there. If somebody stabs you, you just got to try to fight and defend yourself without getting loud. Because if you get loud and bring attention to it and the cops come, then you're going to have more problems than you did in the first place because now you a punk ass snitch. So they're just getting it as quietly as they can and there's a crowd of people around them and everybody's trying to like not get bled on and not watch and bring attention to it because like if you just gawk and if you just like at it, you're going to bring attention to it too and that looks bad on you. Um, and these guys stabbed them up and they ended up scooting off and I think that they got caught later because they came around and did a blood check like on the yard, like checking people. A lot of the time, if it's a fist fight, what they'll do after a fist fight, if, if somebody's real lumped up and they don't see who lumped them up, the COs will go around and they'll shine a flashlight on your knuckles to see if there's any breakages or any bruising on your knuckles at all whatsoever. So like, if you're gonna go out and do a fight, like they sold handball gloves at OSP because we had a handball court out there. If you put those handball gloves on, that's going to help give you some padding. You're still going to be able to mash someone up real good, but it's going to save your knuckles some wear and tear, which is really smart to do if you're going to get in a fight. And then also on the converse, if you see someone coming up to you with gloves on, you know what time it is, bro. You could square back and like be ready for it. Because, you know, a lot of the times people jump you. There's no fair fighting in prison. There's no such thing as a fair fight in prison. If you fight in fair, your tactics suck. And I'm quoting my big homie Rock on that, dog. What's up, man? Um, Sam Bishop, big love and respect to you, dog. Appreciate you. Uh, let's see. What's another one? Pudding pop for Cosby. Yeah, I don't know. He might have got his pudding popped in there and we just didn't hear about it. I don't know. Stuck in the system. JD Delay. Uh, the Chomo Punisher. Salute. Salute, homeboy. Appreciate you. Big love. All right. So, six foot four... 180, I'll do a backflip. Andy, my dog, what's up, man? Hey, I can't believe you six foot four. Hey, I need to talk to you, Andy, when I get off live. Johnny Mitchell hit me up and he was wondering if he could get your contact information. He'd like to have you on his show, The Connect. So um, let me connect with you afterwards uh, as if we're not always texting back and forth. I just didn't have time to text you before I got on the live. He just hit me up. So if you want to go on his podcast, his show, bro, I think it would be fun for you, my man. Uh, Mrs. Blaze, thanks everyone for joining us. We love you, Mrs. Blaze. We are about to shut it down, but real quick, I want to give a shout out to Trev, Abigail, Miss Blaze. Uh, our mods here are the absolute best. I don't know. I didn't see anybody else in here uh, this evening, but if I missed any of our other mods that are here tonight, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for all the work that you do to keep this uh, a good place for all of us to be able to hang out without too much wild stuff. Blackbeard says, I'm a big guy. Do you have any 4X? I think that 3X is the highest that we were able to go on this run, man. I apologize about that. Um, but yeah, thank you to the mods. We love you. We love each and every one of you people that are in this community. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of my life and my daily recovery. And uh, I just want you to know that you are absolutely worth it. We believe in you. So walk out into the rest of this week and own it, man. And um, Oh, just a quick announcement. We're not going to be doing Sunday Night Live because we're going to be in Portland. Um, we're going to see uh, a concert in Portland, and I'm just not going to be able to be uh, doing a live. But I'm going to try to do another one either Friday or Saturday night. So stay tuned for that. I'll let you guys know when the next live is going to be. But Sunday Night Live is canceled for this week and this week only. Big love and respect to each and every one of you guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. One love. Be good or be good at it, baby.